Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it is January 4th of 2017. And this is going to be my video blog. I don't intend, unless I get sidetracked, I don't intend to have a story in here to tell you one of my little stories. But uh, I've just been updating what's going on. Uh, I blogged. Let's see if I have my blog. I do. Okay, here it is. I uh, blogged about this yesterday. I live in an apartment complex in Fort Worth, Texas. And I've noticed I've been here, I think, about five years. I'm not sure. Well, I think I mentioned here. Yeah, I moved in here in February of 2011. Uh, when I moved in, I moved into an upstairs uh, apartment, second floor. These apartment buildings uh, have first and second floors. Uh, I moved into the second floor, one bedroom, one bathroom with my grandson. And then later we moved down here on the ground floor, thank God, to a two bedroom two bathroom and he just recently as you if you've been watching the videos you know he moved out but I'm glad I'm on a ground floor because it was difficult when I go into this to the second floor really difficult carrying you know stuff now I physical condition I've gotten weaker and older and probably more stupid but uh, I would just walking up to the second floor would be difficult for me. I would make it. Carrying up groceries, carrying up two liter bottles of Coke, I, I would be hard pressed. Uh, there was a gentleman that lived in an apartment over here. In fact, he worked. He was uh, a maintenance guy here, and he worked here, and. He had some medical problems. Finally, he ended up in the hospital for a while. I mean, but it, he, when he came back uh, from being in the hospital, and he was still going to try to work here, was, uh, I went out and he was unloading his uh, vehicle, and I could see him having problems. You know, he would, had to wait at the, which I would have to do now, wait at the b bottom of the stairs and look up or whatever, and he had a, one of those big things of uh, water, bottled water. And so I went over, it was the last thing for him to get out. I went over and I said, let me help you with that. And so I took it up, and this wasn't very long ago, I, I took it up and I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it up there or not, but anyway, I didn't let him know that. And then I told him, you know, hey, if you need any help uh, in the future, uh, you know, let me know and I'll help you. Or my son lives right over here. He, you know, he will help you. Then I saw him after that. He went back to work and uh, I saw him at the bottom of some stairs in one of the apartments, you know, having to go up and do something, maybe change a light, something, you know. He wasn't carrying anything or whatever, but I saw him just looking up there and at the bottom just waiting and I knew, you know, and then right after that he, you know, he quit. So when he was looking up there, I have, the, I know that feeling. Thank God I don't live on the second floor now. But anyway, I live in this apartment and uh, now we're, I mean, I'm on the ground floor and there's an apartment above. When I first moved in here, for a long time, I don't maybe a year or, or for a long time, I never ever heard a sound. Never saw, really, I don't think I saw any, you know. Never heard a sound in all that time. Uh, then finally, I, there was a young girl that, uh, and then she was moving, you know, moving out, moving in with her boyfriend, I believe. And she'd been living there all that time. I'd never heard a sound. The people that have moved in since, I think there's been about three, 
people that have moved in uh, since that time. And all of them, I hear them when they're going up the stairs, bang, 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 bang. And they make, I don't think the first people made so much noise upstairs. Was, I think that was just two guys, foreigners, who were going to school someplace, I think. And uh, then the next people that moved in, I think it was the next people that moved in, uh, they made a tremendous amount of noise. Not the TV, I never, this, these buildings are built really well. Uh, you can have your TV or radio loud or whatever, but banging on the stairs. And then uh, also those people every time, and it would be like late at night, which I don't really care that, you know, I'm usually up, but they never fail to walk by the windows here, you know, on the sidewalk that I didn't hear them. I don't care if it was two or three o'clock in the morning, talking loud and go up. And the people after that, that just moved out, uh, had two little toddlers, I think both still in, in, I think, diapers. And I didn't hear the kids, but there again, every time they came by the window and they would be, they'd come back, they would go someplace and in the morning I would hear them, you know, running the shout, you know, getting up apparently, you know, starting their day. But then also like 3 a.m. in the morning, I don't know if they worked evening show, you know, well, no, they had their, I don't know, but a lot of banging. Well, I think the last two, I know yesterday, I'll just talk about yesterday, when apparently people didn't pay their rent or something because the maintenance people here, or the maintenance guy, came over and started throwing their, their stuff out of the place. And uh, kind of sad, it was, you know, baby stroller, baby strollers or baby stroller, baby crib, all kinds of stuff, throwing, you know, throwing it out there and throwing it in the trash. And I've noticed that, I don't know how uh, I guess some of these people don't pay and then the maintenance people come, you know, and change the lock on the door and throw their stuff in the trash, out in the trash container. Sofas and end tables and chairs and all kinds of stuff. Kind of, but it was really pitiful yesterday because it was baby strollers and stuff. Um, Well, as I told you in the video, I think yesterday or the day before, we, I now have, it took 11 years, I have 2,003 subscribers. Uh, views, there have been 993,168 views, so eventually, uh, I don't know how long that's going to take, but uh, eventually this, my site will have had a million views. Is that what comes after 993,000 and one I wouldn't know? You can see here from this analysis, analysis that uh, my estimated revenue making uh, for this is going to be, for the last 30 days, will be $35.06 so far. And uh, That's, they don't pay you, YouTube doesn't pay unless you have a, until you have $100 with them. So I probably won't get any money, which will be for a couple more months, and then I'll get a little bit over $100. That's from uh, you watching my videos and seeing the advertising. It doesn't, uh, I don't get any revenue because of uh, comments or uh, 
thumbs up or anything like that, that might enter into whether they decide, which they probably, the feature might, you know, uh, when you, where it would pop up someplace when you first go there and you go to YouTube, maybe uh, that might pop up. It's not going to, uh, but I thought you might find that interesting. Uh, CNN breaking news, Macy's cuts 10,000 jobs and closes 68 stores. Amazon and I guess it's Amazon, well, uh, and online retailers, they're, they're killing stores like uh, Macy's and Sears and uh, all those type of stores are just, you know, it, funny, it was, I don't know, I don't think they're hurting Walmart yet. Well, I bet they are, but it's kind of funny. Walmart stores came in, especially to small towns and uh, places like that, and a Walmart store would come in, and it would, little mom and pop stores would be, they'd just go out of business, you know. People would go to Walmart uh, instead. And, uh, of course, Amazon I think killed little, I'm sure there's still some, but you know, killed the bookstores because that was Amazon's big thing in the beginning, you know, books. And uh, your little neighborhood bookstore or whatever, they, and now, of course, Radio Shack went down the tubes. Uh, sometime for my story, I'll tell you, I don't think I've covered that yet. That's going to be a problem. Remember what I told you. But, uh, I actually worked for Walmart or for uh, Radio Shack as a manager trainee for uh, a few months. I'll tell you that story. I think it's kind of interesting. Gives you an idea of about the philosophy of Radio Shack and well, I'm not sure they. I think they went out of business or they combined with some of those Radio Shack stores became like cell phones, you know, combination or something, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, well, we have Trump's picture here. I wanted to mention something, because it's like the beginning of the year. Remember, also remember, I was 100% wrong about Donald Trump. I didn't think he really wanted to be president. I didn't think he really would run for president. When he was running for president, I, I didn't think that I didn't think that he would win. The uh, Republican uh, position be their candidate. I didn't think he'd be their candidate. I did not think that he would win the election uh, at all. Of course, he didn't get the most popular vote. No matter what he says, he. Hillary Clinton got three million more votes, popular votes, but he won the Electoral College and he won. Uh, so I've been wrong about uh, President-elect Donald Trump from the very beginning. But since it's the beginning of the year, let me make my prediction about the future. Uh, historians when they look at the U.S. presidents or whatever, they the most corrupt uh, presidency was uh, Ulysses Grant after the Civil War. General Grant was elected president of the United States, and his historians look at all the presidencies, and his was the most corrupt. Now, he wasn't. He just picked the wrong people, and I, 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 I can't remember. I read his uh, the biography that he wrote. Is it a biography? If somebody writes it about, if you write it about yourself, well, anyway, I read that. I don't remember when I read it because it was a long time ago. I don't remember if he talked about his. I remember he talked about. I remember the part about the Civil War and about Lee's surrender and that entire part of the book. I don't remember. But I think I saw a documentary or maybe read something, and I and it's agreed that uh, U.S. Grant wasn't, you know, corrupt. He didn't really do anything wrong except 
he picked bad people. He picked, and I have a feeling, and I can't remember if I read this or if it's just what I'm thinking. Is I think that what he did is he, the Civil War was traumatic. Uh, you know, it was really big. Uh, I think he picked people that, I bet you that he picked people that, he, that were good generals or good officers or something for, you know, to go into the government. And they didn't, they stole money every chance they got. So historians pick Grant's administration as the most corrupt. And then the, and I'm not sure that historians really need to, uh, but his, well, the administration, and this is going to surprise you and shock you, and if you're a Republican or right wing, you're not going to believe it, but it's it's accurate and true. The administration that had the most felons in it had the most people go to prison from the administration, had the most removed from office for criminal actions, was Ronald Reagan's administration. So, um, I think my prediction is that I'm 75 years old, maybe I won't be around to see it. I think that in the future, when they're looking back, I think they're going to, when they say, you know, what was the most corrupt administration? I think they're going to say the Donald, President Donald Trump's administration. And I think if they're asked, and what was the administration that had the the most arrests and convictions and removals from office and felons or whatever, I don't think it's going to be Ronald Reagan's administration anymore. I think it'll be the Donald Trump, you know, presidency. I really do. I think that's what's going to happen. Which is not good for you know the United States, and that's not what I want. I don't want any of those things to happen. Uh, I want the president, whoever whoever is president of the United States, I want them to be a good president. I want them to have a successful administration. I don't want to bad things to happen. I'm not like the Republicans who. Uh, well, let's just take, we won't even take Clinton, let's just take uh, the Obama administration. I'm not like the Republicans who decided that they wanted to totally make the president, President Obama, a failure and who would not, you know, they weren't going to cooperate with anything, they weren't going to pass anything, they weren't going to do anything in order to make his years. First it was to make, you know, the, his first term his only term. That was, so they spent four years trying to make sure that he can't, that he can't accomplish anything, he can't do anything. And uh, then when he got elected for his second term, then they just, you know, it was the same thing that they wanted to make him an unsuccessful president. And just think of the damage. Think of those eight years that if the Republicans had been, you know, we don't like, you know, Obama, but we want to pass this, it'd be good, or what can we work, you know, with Obama, what what can we what can we do with him that doesn't violate, you know, uh, our principles or something, what can we do with him to make his presidency successful and make the United States to improve, and they didn't. Just imagine, we, God, I'm not sure we need a Congress because Congress spent eight years just talking about Benghazi, holding and just do, doing absolutely nothing. So we have now a in. Uh, the 20th, 16 days, we will have President Donald Trump. 
you know, I I love history. I love I love politics. I used to love politics. I mean, big fan of. You know what I hope that Donald Trump does because Donald Trump doesn't understand. Donald Trump is dumb. God, I hate to stand that. It's it's scary. Uh, I think what he ought to, he should stop tweeting, and he should watch every episode. It's on Netflix. He can do it for free, because I know he doesn't have the money to do it. Right? He should watch every episode of The West Wing on Netflix to see how the government, to see how the White House works. He'd learn. Actually, it would be a. Uh, he's going to be. He knows already. Yeah, he knows everything. Uh, so far, things do not look good for the Donald Trump administration. Uh, and he's surrounding himself with the worst people. Uh, President Bush, the last one, 33, uh, whatever, the young one. He did have advisors who had experience and, and know-how. Uh, his vice president was, God help us. But uh, he had people around him to to help him, and I think he I think he listened to them and sought their advice and expertise. Donald Trump is surrounding himself with people that. He shouldn't be surrounding himself with. Uh, but Donald Trump thinks that he knows everything, and Donald Trump isn't going to listen to those people. So I, it's going to be scary for the next four years. I, I don't see Trump making it four years. But on the other hand, I can't see the Republicans, no matter how bad Trump is, I can't see him removing him, impeaching him. Uh, by the way, about impeachment, uh, we've had two presidents impeached. Impeached, by the way, for, especially for those out, uh, for the Republicans, for the right wing who are stupid. Uh, Impeach does not, impeach means to bring to trial. It doesn't mean you're removed from office. So uh, Johnson, President Johnson was impeached. And it was, it's interesting, if you read the, which is a good read, but nobody talks about it anymore. If you read John F. Kennedy's book, Profiles in Courage, he took, and I think they were all politicians, I believe, he took some who, men who did the right thing, did the heroic thing in spite of, and it came down to one vote on, to, on removing President Johnson from office. And the senator was a Republican senator from Kansas, and he voted not to impeach Johnson and that kept President Johnson from being removed from office. That would have been our first and only president to be removed from office. And that Republican senator did the right thing. He did what his conscience, conscience told him to do. And that's why John F. Kennedy put him in the book Profiles and Courage. I'm not sure we have those kind of, I hope we do, not sure we have those kind of people now in Congress. But I think, because Donald Trump is doing things, he's already doing things which are illegal, that are unconstitutional. But the clause in there, I'm not sure that it's in the Constitution. I'm not sure that it applies to a president-elect. But on the 20th, if he, uh, when he's inaugurated, if he continues to do this, that would be, those things that he's doing would be enough to impeach him and remove him. Oh, anyway, uh, 
So then Clinton, President Clinton, was impeached, brought to trial, but not removed, you know, not, re not removed from office. When that happened, I blogged. I was really mad when that happened. And I blogged that, in my opinion, every one of the House members who voted to impeach the president should never, you know, their constituents, their, their peop any, the people of the United States should make sure that those people were never, ever elected. That would be the end of their career, that they were never, ever elected to any federal office for sure. And my wish was they wouldn't be elected dog, couldn't get elected dog catcher. And the reason I, I put that was uh, to send a message to Congress and to people that you do not remove a president of the United States for political reasons. You don't use the impeachment process and because of the damage you do to the country because of the bad PR and because I don't care what President Clinton said, oh, you know, no, going through that procedure, that didn't, that didn't affect my ability to govern at all. I still governed and I, I, I didn't, uh, but you know that it did. I mean, you know that his attention was taken away from terrorism, was taken away from things that it shouldn't have, you know, because it was of that issue. And, and I felt that, you know, Congress should never attempt a coup, attempt, you know, to undo the votes of the American people to remove a president unless it, unless it was really something that needs, not for minor, not for getting a blow job. Yes, I know he, uh, swore under oath that he didn't have sex with that woman, that he swore under oath uh, that he was, that that was perjury. You know, I'm not married now. Are you, you know, are you married? Would you, you know, I don't care if I, when I was married, if I'd have been, an, if I'd have been under oath for some reason, and well, of course I'd never cheated on my wife, but if I had, Or if it was, you know, if I was under oath and they said, Mr. Howard, did you ever think, did you think that your wife was fat? I would, no, positive, no. I, did you, you never, you know, or if they said, you know, if I had cheated on my wife, did you ever cheat on your wife? No, you know, you're under oath. I'm under oath, yeah. You, you know, you're, this is just be perjury. This would be perjury, Mr. Howard. If, did you ever cheat on your wife? No, I did not cheat on my wife. You know, no way. Now, if, you know, if they were asking the President of the United States or somebody or, you know, did you, did you give top secrets to the, the Russians or did you uh, steal, you know, and if, you know, I would, t I would tell the truth, you know, but I had no way as a married man am I going to say I cheated especially fucking Hillary Clinton, would I, you know, she, you know, you'd say you cheated on her, she'd probably castrate you when she, when you got, when you got home. So, Bill Clinton, that was a setup. The Republicans had decided, you know, they needed to get, they wanted him out of office, uh, President Clinton, and so they wanted they wanted to get him under oath somehow and get him to do that, and he did exactly, you know, what they 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 planned it out. You know, get him under oath and get him to, under oath, deny something. So, and it was just strictly a attempted coup, of, you know, a removal from office of somebody that the American people had voted into office. So, uh, now by the way, and I wouldn't, I did, wouldn't want him to remove, you know, <laughs> what's interesting is, I 
told you about all the felonies in, in a, the Reagan administration. No, there's no doubt about it that Ronald Reagan committed offenses that definitely you could remove somebody from, remove a president for that. Uh, and that was for the Iran Contra, you know, that entire thing was strictly something that that's something you would remove, but I, I would, I wouldn't want him removed. I wouldn't want the president of the United States removed. Of course, that wouldn't have been for political reasons. That had been, you know, but still, I wouldn't want him removing a president from office by impeachment. That shouldn't be something that's. So what I wanted was, if they had handled the congressman in the House of Representatives who were just trying to remove President Clinton to get him out of office and to change the election. If those people had been crushed, never to hold office again, their political careers were over again, never would there be any talk from Democrats or Republicans about removing a president from office. There'd be no more talk about impeachment unless there was something that's really, you know, unless it really, and now we have, you know, as soon as Obama was, I think maybe before he took office, there was talk about, you know, impeachment and there was talk about, you know, when Bush was uh, in office, there was talk, a little bit of talk from the Democrats about impeaching him for something and just, you know, I'd like to see an end put to that. I spent more time on this than I wanted to talk about. Uh, Anyway, I was going to talk about some other things about, but I don't see how, well, back to politics again. Uh, Donald Trump, President-elect Donald Trump, it's scary, but I don't, I don't know what's going to, I don't know what's going to happen. He isn't smart and he's not surrounding himself with the this, this sort of people that he should. He's surrounding himself with the sort of people that he shouldn't. And also Donald Trump, I've sort of worked with people like that. He thinks he knows stuff and he doesn't and he won't listen to people. I worked with, I think I told you the, I, I believe I, I told that story. When I worked at the hospital and the director, there was a fire. I was at the scene of the fire on the second floor and the director of security was playing the big shot on the third floor, trying to make an impression on the director of volunteers who was there. And he was, I was on the second floor with the fire in the hospital and inquiring, you know, where have the fire, has the fire department, you know, and he was up there on the radio to, when I called, you know, saying, you know, the fire, and I'm, you know, the fire's here, it's a electrical motor here on the, you know, and I'm downstairs on the second floor. No, sir, heavy fire and smoke, I'm at the scene of the fire, send the fire, you know, and then he's up on the radio, you know, no, Jim, it's up here, and I, sir, there's fire here and smoke, I'm at the scene of it here on the second floor in the telephone equipment room. No, Jim, and then I had to call outside to the parking lot attendants and say, do you have this fire department? Out? Yes, you know, bring them through. And I told them how to bring them, you know. Now, that's just one that, but I worked with other guys, super, other people like that, that uh, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't let, they think that, you know, they think they were, they were, they think they were smarter and they just wouldn't wouldn't listen. Listen, you know, the, the people, you know, especially when somebody's when you get some, somebody who's insistent and says, you know, just don't think. And that's the problem with him. Uh, maybe there's somebody who can. I don't think there is who can get through to him, who can say, you know, well that same director of security. 
that I told you about, who I happened to like. He was racist, but I happened to like him. Well, I, I think I mentioned the reason I, I think that I liked. I hope it's not the reason because it'd be a wrong reason. But he gave me fantastic reviews, and let me do things, let me change things and improve things and do stuff. So I kind of liked him. I liked him, even though he fired me eventually. I was at the time actually grateful that he fired me because um, I couldn't stand him anymore to get away from him because he was the opposite of me in so many ways. Um, and I forgot now that what I was going to was, oh, another, uh, oh. Same thing with, you know, he, he did things like he, that was one of the first, you know, one of the first things, and he posted a, a thing in the security officer's office saying that if you missed any officer who was, uh, didn't come in for work, had to have a doctor's excuse. And I, I told that story, and I, and I ran into him out in the hallway, and I said, Mr. Ross, that, you know, and I know, you know, and whatever, and I had to go through the hospital grievance procedure, and man, he was, he, he lost. But to show you the kind of guy, I mean, when I told him, you know, you can't, this is against hospital policy, you can't do this. And, you know, he said, well, Jim, that doesn't apply to you. Uh, it's Tom Haglund, the third shift supervisor. He says, you know, he's not coming in because of snow removal. And I said, if that's the case, Mr. Ross, you need to call him in the office and tell him I've noticed this pattern and because of that, but you can't put a blanket policy out for the entire, you know, and he said, well, and, and he says, you know, I said, I'll, I'll just have to do a grievance. And he said, I, uh, you know, if you don't like it, get out of my you know. And then I found out later, years later, from going to personnel and looking at my requesting to see my file, that he went down to personnel immediately and, you know, told the director of personnel, Vernon Johnson, a great guy, uh, director of human resources. I think it was personnel then. They changed the name to human resources. He went down and he you know, and of course, right, he said he put this policy in, and of course, right away, the, the director of personnel said, well, no, you can't, that goes against hospital policy. But Mr. Ross said, uh, you know, well, Jim Howard, he's the big offender. That's the reason I had to write that policy, because of him and his absenteeism. Well, Vernon Johnson, in the report that I saw later, you know, looked up my record and, and, uh, there was no answer to, you know, and said that my record was, you know, exemplary and whatever. And so, you know, this director of security had gone down and immediately just anything in order to win, but he lost, you know, he lost anyway. Then I found out, then I, I saw that that was a thing he would do is he would say anything uh, and ran into other people. Well, not as bad, I don't think, as the, th the fact that he would lie about things he didn't even, you know, lie about. He brought up that, uh, well, I was a supervisor, and I think at that point I was second shift supervisor. So anyway, uh, uh, director of security calls a meeting of supervisors. We come in and he says, oh, I got great news. We're going to be able to get us a new uh, Jeep vehicle for patrolling purposes, and all we have to do is we'll take over and do snow removal. Isn't this great or whatever? And then, of course, he was he was a smart guy. You know, he asked the day shift supervisor, you know, Ursula Price, oh, great idea, Mr. Ross, great idea. And he asked the uh, lieutenant or whatever, Manuel Camarillo, Great idea, boss. Great idea. Then he asked the midnight shift supervisor, Lloyd Akins. Lloyd Akins. Oh yeah, great idea. Great, you know. We'll, you know. And then he asked me, and I said, 
No, I don't think so. Why would we, that's going to impact, you know, blah, blah, it's going to impact our ability to do our job. We can't be plowing snow and doing our security functions at the same time. Uh, what do we, you know, and it, you know, then Bob Ross goes around, you know, says some more, oh, uh, you know, blah, 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 you know, this is going to be great. We'll get a new vehicle. And then he goes around the same thing to each one. And then he comes to me again. And I no, And also, what do we get out of it? How much of a pay raise are we going to get if we take over snow removal? So I found out later he went to administration and told administration that he talked to all of his supervisors and that all of his supervisors were enthusiastic about the opportunity of plowing snow and salting and sanding parking lots. And, and it just happens that uh, exactly what I told him would happen did happen. I was working second shift and uh, we had our, our Jeep with the blade ready, wasn't on it. We had sand and salt that was okay, that came in. Had all this stuff, it hadn't snowed, winter had just come, and a blizzard hits. And there was three of us working, and I told one of the, you know, I was a supervisor, I said, you know, you stay in side, and the other officer and I said, well, and he said, Jim, no, I want to help too. I said, no, I don't, you know, and then, so all three of us go outside. We're taking care of this blizzard. And then we get a call on the radio and go in and end up with a guy who uh, was, uh, had been in the emergency room and he'd been there a while, quite a while back in a room. And, Cause there really wasn't anything wrong, you know, back in a, a treatment room and he the guy had loaded up his pockets with uh, some stuff from them you know nothing expensive but prescription pads and he went and was standing in front of the information desk writing his own prescriptions or whatever and then he went back to the you know about that time we get a call and he went back to pharmacy and then that's when we got when I got a call and I went in to see what the call was about and then I heard number 10 door alarm this was at night and that was right down by administration and exit, and it was by pharmacy. And when I went by pharmacy, they said, there's a guy here making out his own prescription, you know. And I went out the door, and he was off hospital property, because when you go out that door and you cross the sidewalk, <laughs> that was Brian Dot, and you were the, you know, right across the street, that was it. He was, and I, it was pouring down, you know, snow was just coming out. I said, sir, can I help you? No, no. I said, Are you sure? And, no, 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 and he kept, you know, I said, did you want to get a prescription filled? He said, yeah, I said, I can help you. Just step over here on hospital property, you know, and he came over and I put him under arrest, put handcuffs on him, took him inside. The other security officers showed up. We all had on orange jumpsuits. <laughs> and uh, the police showed up and everything. We had this guy in handcuffs and everything. And the police... You know, I was like, who are you guys? I said, Hospital security. <laughs> so that's the problem is that I'm afraid that he's not going to listen to people and he doesn't have anybody around him that can, that will tell him, they're going to be telling him the, the wrong information. Uh, I told you some stories, didn't I? Damn. What we need is, and technology exists. I, I need, I need to get the hardware, and you guys could hook me up. I could hook myself up to something, something that not. Well, I'm got a pacemaker. So I don't want to, don't want to be fucking uh, need a, something to shock me or whatever. And when I start a story, you just zap, you know, you could zap me or whatever. Uh, ah, okay, I wanted to update you. Um, by the way, here is, no, I took a photo of that. Ah, that's right. 
This is the other room, and that big television set is the one I told you about in the past. My ex-wife, who lives next door, Darlene, she had that television set, of, I think it's 40 inch for five years, and then it started malfunctioning in a crazy, bizarre way, erasing channels that were, you know, set up, flipping from channel to channel, uh, doing all kinds of business. And I went up, my son tried to figure out what was wrong with it. Uh, I went over, tried to figure out what was wrong with it over uh, some time. I mean, eventually it would work for, start working for a while, then it would start doing these crazy things again. Uh, so she bought a new, I think a 40, I forget how big, I can't remember now, she bought it. That's a TCL um, television set, 40 inch. And she, in the past, she had years ago, she had it five years. And years ago, uh, her remote broke. And I found, she couldn't find a remote or whatever, I didn't find one. And then I found on eBay or whatever I think it was, um, a remote that was like $15 or something. And I checked by going to message boards and I found uh, people who specifically said in these message boards that such and such a remote worked with their TCL, you know, without a problem and that it worked. Because you couldn't find, couldn't go just find that model and then find one that was available from TCL or whatever. So I told her, and it was, I said it's $15, and she was, oh no, I can So then she went to eBay and she found a programmable one thing for $9. She said, well, this is not, I said, but this, you know, this remote control, these people, Oh, I'm going to go with the $9 one. She ordered the $9 one. Then it was a bitch for her to get it to figure. And then some of the keys didn't, you know, she had that. So she decided when she couldn't get this thing to work right that she bought a new one. And so I brought that over here and hooked it up for a while. And it worked with, uh, and then it started doing a few strange things. Not all the strange things we're doing over there. So I put it in the closet and then I'm from China I ordered a uh, remote and from Amazon. And on Amazon it said, you know, that this without you don't have programming or anything, you just put the batteries in and it works with this with that model of T V set. And so I took it out of the closet uh, yesterday or the day before, set it there, and like I said, it's a, you know, it's a big screen, and uh, put the batteries in, and it's working. Now it's been running. I haven't turned it off. <laughs> I mean, if it, I'm, it, but it's working. Uh, so got that big screen TV in there. I, maybe you don't call that a big screen, but I do. And so I brought the um, nope, that's it. Oh no, no, oh, no. Where is Google? Where is Google Play? Okay. Well, I brought the. No, oh, here it is. I brought the small. Uh, TV uh, that I purchased, uh, Roku TV, because that's what I have is Roku. That one in there, now the big one has a Roku 2 hooked up to it. This smaller one here, I forget how big it is. It uh, doesn't need a, because it, it's Roku's built in. Uh, and so, it's, so now I have all over here the, and I moved the computer that was here, or oh, I brought a table and moved it over there to get it away for, because of noise. And I wasn't that my intention at the time wasn't, I was just going to use the extra desk space. But then I thought, okay, so. Uh, the other day I was, um, showing you my cell phone and trying to show you, uh, what apps I had on. And since we're here, 
these are all the apps that I they're probably not all installed but uh, cam scanner I just installed paid for it a small amount of money the go launcher prime it's a sorry I didn't understand the question I heard uh, the launcher that was kind of it was doing some strange things as you can see I've paid for a number of launchers that were installed on uh, I'm not going to say it again because of uh, but there's one uh, this high Q voice recorder I have in pro and I paid a little bit for that uh, radar weather radar dark sky premium I paid a little two night well you can see yeah you can see how much I paid you can see for this next launcher 3d shell I paid $17 for that and I'm not using it uh, QR barcoder I'm using a diabetic program I've got uh, code red on there that was 99 cents got radar scope on there 999 I paid for that here's what I'm using a Nova launcher prime and it cost me five dollars bling I don't think it's on my uh, says Nova launcher was Nova launcher what I said I was using because I see that I canceled it uh, I don't understand about that. Uh, I think I, re I reinstated. I took off knots 3D. Learning, learn how to tie knots. YouTube. I'm not sure what that is. Twit netcast. I have on there. That was a dollar forty nine. Uh, Hundred forms of fear. I have no idea what that is. Uh, my radar. Star chart, that's really neat. I'm, I'm sure you've seen those. You hold your cell phone up to this, you see a, a bright light or whatever. Hold it up and it tells you the if it's a planet or a star, a star, or shows you the constellations are pretty neat. 249. ISS detector, that uh, tells you the International Space Station and others I think also position in the sky and other data when it's going to appear when you can see it visually actually see it with your uh, with your eye focus started to go out I thought my I didn't know whether my diabetes Lord of the Rings of fellowship I have no idea I guess I must have I don't watch stuff on the RF finder, that's for ham radio operators. Uh, I put a thing on there uh, for medications to keep track of the medications and when to take them or whatever, and then I decided it was pain in the ass. APR messenger, pro capture, one year access to radar now. Swift, Swift key keyboard. I'm not using that. I have the new Google keyboard, uh, which I, maybe it'll show it here, which is really neat. They've, that's, I'm using the Google keyboard. eWeather, camera zoom, another launcher that I tried. Okay, it doesn't show up that keyboard, but it's on here. Scanner radio weather bug. It says refunded, so I guess I'm, I'm not using that one anymore on my thing. So that's it. Um, this is longer than I intended to talk, and I didn't intend to tell you any stories, but I think I did. Oh, I've got uh, go to Amazon. 
Amazon, where are you? I'll just type in Amazon. Orders. This backpack is coming, but it's coming from China, and it's going to be a long time before it gets here. By the way, this I ordered this from Amazon, and it was for that big, and it worked. It came from China, and they sent one, and it got lost. And they contacted me. I didn't even contact them. They contacted me and said, you haven't received your remote control, and I answered back no that I hadn't, and they said, it appears to be lost, we're sending you, in, you know, and they sent this one. And it was like $15 or whatever. I'll do an Amazon review on this. It has a whole bunch more controls than the original one has on there, so I guess if, if I had a different TLC TV set, man, I'd have, it's got all kinds of buttons on here. Closed captioning, picture in picture, all kinds of stuff. T-Link, whatever that is, Netflix, Smart APP. I'll do a review of that. Okay, this is arriving Friday. Today is Wednesday. This headset is, I ordered it. It's arriving. See how it does. Um, I wonder if I should go back. Those of you who have been watching my videos, and remember I've gone through testing a whole bunch of uh, headsets and microphones, different microphones, different setups. I'm not sure if it's my speakers here, but this audio for these last, for these videos recently, I'm using two microphones. There's, there's one, and then uh, there's the, where's the other one? There's the other one, I think, or is that both? I don't know, but it sounds too brassy to me. Too, if, uh, let me know, especially those of you who, who in the past have who've been following and who made comments about liking this or that audio. Uh, let me know what you think of this, of the audio that I've been doing with a bunch of these uh, videos. And do you think I need to go back to using a headset? And maybe this headset that's coming would be the one. I'll try it out when it gets here, but uh, let me know what you think about this audio. You know, I couldn't swallow pills uh, for a long time, until, I don't know, fairly recently. I would get prescriptions filled and request liquid or something other than pills, or pills that I could open up, you know, capsule that I could open up or do something. And the pharmacy would say, is this for a kid? And I couldn't swallow pills. I mean, even one pill. You just saw me take a handful of pills. And I guess at some point, well, I never, I really wasn't on medications. And I guess when I got to the point when I was 65 or however old at some point, when I, I just decided, okay, I've got to, I got to swallow pills. I, back to story time. <laughs> Uh, when I was like in kindergarten, I was supposed to take a pill, I forget what it was for. And my, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't swallow it. Uh, 
my mother and the landlady, heavy set landlady, uh, they, they sat on me, they put the pill in my mouth, held my held their hand over my mouth, closed my nostrils to get me to swallow, and I would not swallow the pill. I don't know if that had anything. I don't think it did. I don't think I was traumatized that, you know, I couldn't swallow pills because of that, I don't think. But uh, now I can swallow pills, and I got some pretty good size. The, I got some pretty, you know, there's even, this is, I take two of these at night. That's the diabetic uh, medication. Um, I got one that's bigger than that. I think I have to take, or maybe that's a vitamin. I vitamin I take sometimes. I I'm glad I'm able to take them now. God, I don't know what I would do. But I know. The mistake that I was making, I don't know if there's a, I guess you could probably do a Google search and see how to take pills or something. What I was doing, maybe not all the time, but what I was doing when I you knew I needed to take a pill and there was no way I could get, you know, well, if I couldn't crush it up, and of course some pills are not supposed to, they're supposed to be released slowly and all this kind of stuff. Uh, what I was doing was taking big old gulp of water, well, probably Coke, but a big old gulp filling my mouth, and, then, and of course it's floating around in there and whatever, and now I realize that I uh, just need a little tiny sip that works better. So, any of you adults have problems uh, swallowing a pill? I guess it's time to bring this to a conclusion. I thank you for watching. It is 9.50 p.m. I kind of running short of food here, and I hate to order again from Amazon. I've got some hot dogs packaged that haven't been open in the refrigerator. But about two weeks ago, it said, you know, the thing on it says it's an open package, and I think it'd be safe, but it, two weeks ago it said, you know, use by, I don't want it by that date. I don't want to take a chance. Uh, but I do have some stuff. I have some salmon in a package. And also I have... I have noodles, a bunch of noodles, you know, you put water with the noodles. I have uh, french fries, and I got a package of uh, potato, let's see, french fries, and it's red, I think red, is it red potatoes? Red potatoes, sweet potatoes, sweet potato french fries, it's a small package. That's a mistake when I ordered this last time from Amazon or from Prime now, I ended up getting smaller packages than I thought, and also, so, I know I got a small package of them, I guess I'll try those. Sweet potato french fries, might be interesting. I appreciate you watching, uh, stay tuned for more videos from Fort Worth, Texas.